Um, all right, let's get into some specifics here. Um, many uh, that are talked about and some that I've covered uh, slightly here, but we'll start with work ethic. I can't do anything you know, on this topic without talking about work ethic. I've had thousands and thousands of people come through my door, whether it was on my internal sales teams back in the, in the day, I'm selling for my EPC, um, and uh, all our door knockers way, way back in the day, our remote team, uh, work ethic is you, you, someone walks in, they can talk the talk, but very often you'll see somebody, and this is, you know, heartbreaking to people that see this firsthand, see someone that's full of potential and, um, they just come through and boom, they're a week or two in, they talk the talk, but they just don't show up. They're late. They're not putting the hours in and you're sort of just screaming at them and you're like, dude, you, you can crush this man. Keep going. Like you have what it takes. I've seen what it takes. You have what it takes. You just got to keep going. But then they, they fall. Right. Uh, and it's really rough to watch. And so the work ethic aspect is certainly something to talk about, even though it, you know, it's not specific to remote, but remote sales is not going to be anything different. Right. Um, you have to put the work in you, and for a lot of people, you have to, especially if you're coming from that nine to five, you have to, uh, put in, uh, more work than you've ever had ever in your entire career. And if you're not willing to do that, you're not going to get the reward for doing that. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm not here to talk about work ethic. I'm talking here to talk about remote solar sales, but that's an obvious thing, right? Don't think this is going to be an easy ride. Let's talk about the, probably the number one challenge that people think is a big challenge. Um, lead generation. Most common question I've ever gotten ever talking about remote solar sales, lead generation. All right. Um, why, why is this the most common thing? I, I think the, the reason why this question is so common is because so many people are, are told there's a certain number of lead generation strategies in the world, um, knocking doors and running ads. That's like the only two they know. And so when someone says, I, I see it all the time on posts, on my posts, on social media and others, someone says something about virtual, you look in the comments, it's how do you generate your leads? Where are you finding your leads? It's just leads, leads, leads. Um, it's strange because, you know, those that are in virtual, especially those that are calling, cold calling, calling aged leads and, uh, you know, using alternate methods of lead generation. You look at that and you're like, dude, their, their leads are everywhere, man. But for the people that don't do that, they see that as a barrier. They're like, oh, the only way to get leads is running ads and knocking doors. And I don't have enough cash to run ads right now. So I guess I have to keep knocking doors. Lead generation is not a problem as soon as you get in. There are so many different lead generation strategies, especially on the virtual um, side of things. Um, you know, we've been talking about recently, I, uh, when was my organic uh, lead gen machine webinar? Uh, was that last week or two weeks ago? Um, where, uh, you know, I've been talking a lot with the Virtual Solo Club community about this, and we did a webinar on it a week or two ago about the, the massive, massive opportunity of content creation and creating personal brands uh, to attract homeowners to sell solar to later down the road. Like that is just an absurdly massive opportunity right now. Costs absolutely zero dollars. I'm sure you can put some money into it later if, if you want, but initially completely and utterly free. It is the, uh, not, not the new way of cold calling, but it is an equivalent way of cold calling. Uh, probably an easier way of cold calling. Nah, I, I, no, it's actually, it's probably a bit more difficult because the consistency of posting. But if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, watch the webinar from a week or two ago, organic lead machine, if it's up or, or join VSC and you'll get access to it as well. So many different free lead generation strategies right now. Okay. And then of course there's, there's paid uh, lead generation strategies as well, but there are so many out there that generally when, when someone says I, I'm challenged with lead generation, it's because they, they, they just don't know of other ways to do it, you know, and they're sort of inside that box. And that's more of like an education problem as opposed to a lead generation problem. However, it is still one that people come against, right? Where do I get the leads? I won't go into, you know, lead generation strategies and specifics today, but um, the, the, the idea of, of having to funnel a ton of cash up front when you're jumping into virtual for leads is just ridiculous to me. You can do it if you want, but I strongly suggest we got cold calling, we got content machine, we got aged uh, uh, data, we have SMS, we have email marketing, um, we have referral systems, we have friends and family. There are so many different ways of generating leads when you have zero cash to start and remote. It's not really a, a problem, it's a challenge because people see it as a challenge, but again, it's more of an education problem. They just don't know what they don't know. They're not around the right people, giving them these little strategies um, as opposed to it realistically being a, 
uh, uh, a lack of, of options to, to get leads, okay? But it is certainly a challenge. When you m move into this, you're like, where are the leads? Now, don't get me wrong. It's not as though you start selling remotely and leads are just flying at you left, right, and center. Lead generation is the, the lifeblood of every uh, company, right? A wise old man who uh, started a company called Australia Solar Company years ago said, Josh, a solar company is simply a lead generation company that happens to sell solar, right? Leads, leads, leads. It's the lifeblood of all the sales. So it's not going to just, the taps is not going to turn on. But what I am proposing with this very apparent challenge is that it's not a uh, an issue of there not being enough uh, strategies and methods. It's simply an issue of education and not knowing uh, what you don't know, right? And that is easily solved when you start getting around the right people, okay? Um, and we'll talk a bit more about my, you know, takes on some lead gen strategies in terms of timeline and budgets and, and stuff in a bit here. I've talked about that stuff a lot before, but we're going to shed some light on it as well. Okay. Um, let's see. We got cold calling. We got content stuff. We got paid leads. Uh, yeah, a few more. Uh, paid leads are a hack for high intent leads, but it's certainly not cheap. And uh, often newbies don't have how to handle hot leads regardless. Um, I do write this stuff, by the way. This is not AI. Some people look at me and like, oh, this is you get AI. You've never re even read this before. I do. It's just very small on my screen, so I can barely see it. Um, yeah, lead generation. Uh, certainly a challenge. Cold calling is there. Content creation. This new wave of lead generation is taking off. Referral systems, age leads, cold leads, email, SMS. Um, obviously, paid traffic, marketing, running it yourself, um, partnering up with others. There's a ton of strategies out there. And... Um, lots of uh, options there. It is a challenge, but it is not a challenge that can't be overcome. Numero tres, appointment setting show rates. Um, I touched on it briefly. This is, I believe, actually one of the biggest, if the not the biggest challenge of all of remote solar sales that no one talks about. Uh, if you've been in any, any of my trainings ever, especially virtual solar club members that show up to our live training, you know that uh, what I'm about to say. But for those that haven't, for those who don't really know remote, or maybe those that have tried remote didn't have success, or right now they're booking appointments, but their show rate is in the single digits or less, um, you know that this is a, a challenge. Uh, this is a challenge because of how different you have to look at sales and the sales strategy and process compared to what we've been taught in the past compared to what we've been taught with in-person sales and legacy door-to-door -door sales that I was taught, that I taught myself to my door knockers and even to my remote guys when we first started before I knew any better. It, this challenge arises because of the nature of remote sales and, uh, and people's attention spans these days. Appointment setting and show rates. Show rates is the challenge, right? But the very few people understand that the appointment setting is the reason for the challenge that they're facing, right? When you jump into remote, the number one metric that you're going to have difficulty with is not really the close rate, right? It's the show rate. Um, and in remote, if you're getting a customer to show up, that the amount of intent there is far greater than someone who just answered the door in person. So you'll often find that if you're doing things properly, the close rate in remote is not the issue. It's, it's very often the show rate. And if your show rate is killer, and depending on your lead source, we could be talking about 50 to 90% show rate on remote when you're doing well. But when your show rate is killer, it's often an indication of the general health of your entire virtual solar sales process, okay? Um, and it's based off of the appointment setting. Now, I have probably 50 hours of training at VSC just off of this alone and how to solve this. Um, so we're not going to dive into it too much today. But that is a massive challenge. When you jump into it, your show rate's going to be shit because you don't know what you're doing. And the, the hack, the tip, focus on the appointment setting. That is where everything happens. It is not just a boom, boom, boom. Oh, yeah, okay, oh, cool. I'll come back at 5, 5 p.m. tomorrow. The appointment setting process, in my opinion, AKA the problem call, should give you a tip there, is where the magic happens. It's where 80% of the sale happens. Um, and uh, obviously it massively affects your show rate. And if you crack the appointment setting call, uh, you're, you're rocking. And really there is no other solution to that other than mastering the appointment setting call. Um, how do you do that? We have, there's a, I could be here for hours to, to jump into that topic, but massive uh, challenge there with your show rates. Be prepared for that. Don't look at remote solar sales as a whole. Look at your existing 
um, understanding of what a sales process looks like. Maybe you brought it from door to door in person where the appointment setting call is just a, a VA just doing a quick, oh, do you mind if he calls you back tomorrow? Or, oh, just oh, no obligation, free quote, that type of super lightweight appointment setting that's always been taught to us and pushed to us for so long, doesn't work anymore. Does not work anymore. You need to take a proper look at your appointment setting call and your discovery calls, your problem calls, whatever you're, you're uh, talking about, and uh, and hone in on that. But your show rate will certainly be an issue uh, when you first start out and you have grasped that concept. Okay. What else we got? Ah, virtual phones communication skills. Not a lot of people um, uh, talk about this, right? I mean, like, yeah, we we've, we've been talking on the phones our whole life, but. Uh, I feel it's one of those realms where, sure, you talked on the phone, you FaceTime your mom, your buddies here and then, but you never looked at it in in the in a sales environment, and you've never looked at it in terms of how you communicate. When you start really selling things over the phone, if anyone out there has you know been in phone sales for a while, you'll agree with me. When when you started selling things over the phone, you started looking at your casual phone conversations differently as well, right? I remember when I started working in this boiler room in Australia over ten years ago. Um, I, and that was my first real phone sales experience, remote sales experience is I started having conversations with the pizza guy, right. And you know, the, the people's customer service from other companies. And I was, I was getting like, Oh, these guys are horrible. Why, what's, what's wrong with their tonality? Why aren't they intonating properly? And so it sort of unlocks a new world for you in terms of like, you know, what's possible. Um, similarly, I'm sure with the first time you did door knocking or uh, those that are in person sales, um, you started realizing a, a lot more about your body language, you know, taking very intentional steps when you move into a customer's property, handshakes, all these different in-person things that you didn't really know about before. Exactly the same in remote, right? Uh, now, I'm a phones guy. I know uh, people sometimes do video conferencing for virtual solar sales. I'm phones only um, forever. Well, not forever, but uh, for now, at least phones only. And uh, phones only realm of communication is you know, we have a certain amount of data that we can use and um, that communication skill, being able to correctly emphasize concepts and, and garner um, uh, uh, emotions from our customers and display emotions to our customers uh, with, with audio only is an art in and of itself. I've done a ton of videos and training on, you know, why, uh, uh, you know, how to do that effe- uh, effectively. Um, it's certainly not uh, less data, in my opinion. You can still be extremely effective over the phones um, uh, and, uh, you know, get emotions out of customers and everything you need to, to close over the phones. But it's a, no, it's a new realm. It's a new world, right? It's different types of data coming to you. You've heard it before on phone calls, but you've never really taken it and inputted it and, and thrown it into your sales system, right? Let alone been able to output phones only, audio only, uh, a proper sales uh, script, right? So different world. And now who does this affect specifically? I mean, definitely everybody. If you've never done phone sales before, you're gonna get hit with that. But what I, who I really see it affect negatively and, and often causes people to like, like freak out are those that have done in-person, door-to-door for years, even solar sales in-person for years. And, uh, and they're confident because they've, already, they've always been really successful. And so they come and they're like, oh, I'll crush it remote. Yeah, I'll oh, give me a phone. I'm really good. I close 50 million deals a week. Let's make it happen. The first time I saw this was when I was starting to, to bring over my door team to remote. This was in oh uh, the first time I saw, probably 2015 actually, when, when I started bringing door-to-door guys. I remember this, the first guy I, have, I remember ever bringing over door-to-door was 2015. He was a door knocker. He broke his leg and so he couldn't knock doors and I got him into the call center. Yeah, that, oh, can't remember his name. Shout out, I think he's in Australia. I don't know, he's not watching this. But uh, this is the first time I saw it happen and it happened hundreds and hundreds of times since. They're really good, they think they're amazing, they got on the phones and they're just, they're done. Because they're, they're floundering like a fish. They don't know this, this realm of, of communication. So it's gonna be a massive thing, be aware of that. If you can't properly, um, if you can't properly communicate concepts and, 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 and pick up on your customers' um, different uh, tones and, and, and objections that you usually would be able to in person, understand it's not an issue with remote solar sales, it's an issue of you mastering the, the craft of, of communicating over that, uh, that medium, right? Um, what else we got? Phones, communication, uh, yeah, very experienced in-person sales reps, as I said, transitioning to remote will often Flounder like a fish. I love using that term. Flounder like a fish. 
uh, when they realize they don't know how to sell over a phone or even video. And that applies to virtual as well, right? If you're, if you're in home, you're used to shaking the hand and, you know, fa face the husband, you got to turn chair to the wife and really you've got good eye contact. And now, even if you're just over zoom, there's something missing. You feel as though there's something missing where in actuality, there's not much missing. Um, you still have a lot of the same data, even over zoom, even over phones, you're just not used to inputting and outputting that format of data. I, I use the example a lot of times, guys that have just been in the gym, working out arms all day, every day. And then all of a sudden they, you know, they, they sprain the wrists so they can't work out their arms and now they have to do legs. Well, they still have the muscles. They can still do it, but they can't move near as much weight as they were able to with their arms because their legs were just never built properly. The muscles are there. They can build them. They just haven't done it before. So they feel weak and they feel it's not possible, right? This is very similar stuff that's going on here. Um, phones and virtual communication skills going to be a massive challenge. Um, and uh, for those who have already started, you, you've probably at a certain level already overcome that, or you at least know what I mean. Uh, and and, and how, do you, how do you get better? Let's say you're at that mode and you're like, dude, I've, I've already started. I've noticed that I'm not good over the phones. I've never even realized how bad I am over the phones. How do you do that? It's, it's talking to as many people as possible. Um, this type of thing... You know, a lot of people will say pitch practice with others, but it doesn't really work with this type of stuff. You have to be speaking with a real human. So just get on the phones as much as possible. <laughs> I mean, it, I guess it's a bit cheesy to say, but if you can order your pizza on the phone instead of Uber Eats, do that. You know, if you can book an appointment over the phone instead of going to a schedule, do that. Um, but honestly, it's speaking to homeowners as much as possible, everything over the phone, listen to their tonality, practice your tonality, all the basic strategies. And uh, yeah, that's, it's the only way you're going to get better repetitions, right? We're taught the same thing and ev everything else remote is no different. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's a, there might be a few people who are watching this for the first time that, um, you know, it's like, okay, what are the phone strategies? How does that look like? Uh, I would suggest we've done dozens and dozens and dozens of hours uh, on that specifically. I mean, obviously virtual solar club is about phones only remote solar sales. And we have, I, ch I checked yesterday, we have 507 hours of, of courses now at this point. Uh, if you're watching this in the replay or you're watching this in the VSC training library, then you have the access to the training library. Just start going phones, tonality, start searching in the training library for all those courses. Uh, if you're not, if you're watching this somewhere else, uh, jump in and get access to all that stuff because it, it's in depth, right? It's not a simple wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. It's a, it's a full on process that you have to unlearn uh, other things that you've learned and relearn a lot of new processes. Um, but all in all, it is very, very uh, possible. And uh, everyone that I transition, especially if you're doing like virtual or Zoom over to phones only is like, why didn't I do this before? Uh, phones only still to this day in my um, opinion is the most effective way to, to sell remotely. So uh, a few more challenges here. Um, this is a massive one that again, no one talks about. And you know, I don't blame people. Remote sales is a, uh, it's a newish thing, right? So, so not a lot of people talk about these challenges. Um, remote work in, in and of itself is very new. I've been doing it for a long time, but uh, you know, COVID hit and everyone started re working remotely. And what they found, you guys remember, all the companies now are returned to office, you know, return to work. They're trying to get all the remote workers back. Why is that? Well, um, probably many reasons, but a primary reason is because probably results dropped. And the reason results dropped is because when someone is in an office and has a boss over their shoulder and they have meetings in person, it is not easy to, to slack. When you're at home in your PJs, you know, watching Netflix and you have, sort of have your computer and just moving your mouse over your uh, thing to make sure they know you're online, completely and utterly different scenario to stay motivated. The same thing happens with sales. Even if you're an independent door knocker or in-person guy, very often you're going to have in-office meetings or you're going to be around other people on turf. Uh, you're going to be knocking with people maybe. Um, you're going to have some sort of physical connection. Remote? You might not have any of that. I mean, we have people uh, that are selling through VSC all over the world right now. Um, I've got uh, a few people in South America. There's a ton in Colombia. Uh, I'll be in Colombia in two and a half weeks. Uh, we've got a ton of people in Mexico. Um, uh, we were, uh, what's, I forget his name. Sorry if I'm missing your name in uh, Spain in the Spanish market. 
Um, obviously a ton of people getting uh, resources for the Australian market as well. This is, imagine you're independent and you're traveling around or even just in your home office, right? You got a few kids, you wanna spend more time with them. You not having that physical connection with someone on a daily or weekly basis, you might not think it, it crushes you, but it does. Especially if you have no community or people that you even interact with on a virtual level. I see a lot of people, what they do, and it's like 0.1% of pe per people that could actually pull this off. But a lot of people will try to be the person that just never shows up to training sessions, doesn't join any community, doesn't have any support system, and all they do is just go and cold call by themselves in a small room five, six, seven hours a day. If you can pull that off, man, if you're part of that 0.1% that can do that, good on ya, but God, I hope you're not, because it is brutal. Like a lot of people, they come from in office jobs, they come from jobs where they're around other people physically on a daily basis. Then they go to remote work and they're just sitting there because someone told them to get a headset and just sit there and cold call. Great, cold calling's awesome, but don't do it alone. Inbound leads, paid leads, high intent leads, don't do it alone. I don't care how, well, how difficult the sale is or how uh, hot or cold the lead is. Don't do it alone, man. So many people don't realize that though. They had this aspect of like in-person, camaraderie, team building aspect, you know, in an office or out on the turf or, you know, meeting for coffee in the mornings at a, at a thing before hitting the doors. You know, there's, there's always something to it. And you, you hear someone else said, oh, I had this customer yesterday and they did this. And you're like, dude, I had that last week. And what I did was this. It's that nice little give and take. It's like, I, I'm having issues. Other people are having similar issues. Um, I feel like I'm part of a, you know, part of a, a team. Although I'm completely independent, I still have people to fall back on. And in person, you get that a lot more than virtual. One massive thing that people are missing is when they jump into remote, they do it by themselves and it crushes them, right? Because they don't uh, understand that. That is why, uh, in my opinion, having that community and having people you can, you can go to on a daily basis is so damn important. We do three live training sessions a week at VSC. We have people in, in uh, virtual call centers just calling together on a daily basis for hours on end, hearing each other's calls, asking each other's questions. They pretty much don't leave each other's side for five, six, seven, eight hours a day, right? That fills a gap that many people either don't know needs to be filled or don't think it needs to be filled. But I promise you, it will crush you if all of a sudden you switch to remote and you're just you know operating by yourself. It's, it's disastrous for your psyche, for your mental health just is gone, right? Just getting hangups all day and not interested and finance declines and all you look up, you have four gray walls surrounding you. Oh my goodness, man, please. Don't do that. It's rough. So many people do that like uh, because they didn't they don't realize that how negative that is. But if you're doing that right now or if you're transitioning to remote or adding remote to your to your uh, your arsenal there, just keep that in mind, you know? It's not something people talk about, but if you do that, it will fucking destroy you, man. Please don't do it alone. Don't do anything alone, but for God's sake. But sales, remote sales with no boss over you, with no meetings, with no in-person contact with humans, like your brain starts to rot if you don't, you know, get a, a group of people around you on a, on a consistent basis to speak with and, you know, and uh, share ideas with and strategize and, and vent to, okay? Massive challenge. There, everyone's suffering from it. A lot of people are suffering from it, um, but uh, you don't need to. There's some easy solutions for it, okay? That community aspect is massive. Um, any other points there missing on the motivation side of things? I think, uh, yeah, uh, pretty hit that point pretty hard, right? Uh, tech and systems. Okay. M you know, not a challenge for some, but here's the cool thing about remote. Uh, well, it's, it's a challenge as well as it being a weakness. If you're in person, I think like I've mentioned here, it's probably not the best way to do it. But you know, you could get a clipboard, a Google Sheet, you know, and and a piece of paper and pen, knock doors. I mean, I guess you still have to have a computer. Is there paper uh, and pen contracts these days? When I started solar, it was all paper pen contracts and you'd phone to the finance provider office to manually do the approvals. I don't think that exists anymore, right? So you, you probably do need some sort of iPad or phone or something uh, in, in person doing door to door. But you, do, you don't need, intrinsically, you don't need that much tech. You can get away with a very small amount. It's certainly not the best way to do it, but you don't need to. And so because you don't need to, you'll often find that door-to-door -door and in-person sales is generally a lot lower tech than virtual and remote solar sales guys, right? 
Um, remote and, uh, and virtual, however, are intrinsically you need tech. You you cannot function without it. You just it's not a, it's not an option anymore. Um, you need dialers. You need telephony systems, email, SMS, automation systems, scheduling. Um, you need this stuff. Uh, and uh, sometimes that could be a challenge if you're just not tech uh, savvy. But uh, oftentimes people just don't understand this or they get a bit confused, especially if they've never been on that side of the world before about having to set these systems up and all you've done is you've used them before, you've never set it up. That can be a challenge for people. But here's the thing, um, because intrinsically you do need software and you do need systems, it can also be, in fact, is a positive because it forces you to start thinking in a modern way. And um, you know the difference between you just calling leads and doing nothing with them versus you having awesome systems, follow-up sequences, automations through the wazoo, some AI assistance in the back end, warming leads up, uh, no-show sequences, uh, booking systems, you know, auto everywhere your, your systems are dialed in. The difference between that, the same salesperson is gonna double, triple results, right? Pretty easily. So. I see that as a benefit because you're almost forced into, okay, I actually need to find good systems uh, and set this up and your mind goes to, you know, a, a more modern way of doing sales. Um, but for some, you know, if you're not tech savvy, especially, or you just never used them before, it could be a challenge. So um, be mindful of that. Um, I've devoted the past two and a half years to trying to make that as less stressful as possible for people with, um, with our platform, Cinevo. Um, but uh, yeah, it's still something you need to keep in mind and, and have something in your uh, in your back pocket to bring out uh, when you're transitioning to remote. Um, thankfully, there's a lot of you know great systems out there that are built. Uh, I believe Snevo being one of them that you can sort of tap into. But it's still important to understand you know that the the tech, the software. It's not just you being able to sell people anymore. You do need some sort of uh, implementation of uh, modern era uh, sales processes these days. Okay. Um, cool. What else we got here? All right, I think this is the last one, and then we're gonna uh, wrap up with. Uh, we got a few. We got a bit more to go. We got a bit more. Stay with me. Don't click. Uh, don't click that end button. Okay. Um, magic pill scams. What do I mean by that? I mean we've been hit with it like crazy the past year and a half. Everybody has got this new system, guaranteed fifty appointments. Can you handle another three installs a month? AI bot, whatever. Fill your calendar. Click a button. Lead gen services, marketing agency. Oh my goodness, the amount of snake oil salesmen out there in and out, in and out, in and out. Here's $20,000, $50,000. I had a guy uh, a while back, he said he paid $150,000 to somebody for a program. No sales. Like, it's wild out there, folks. And this is a challenge because, dude, if I didn't know what I know now, and I was moving into something like remote solar sales, I didn't know the lingo, I didn't know who to trust, I didn't know where to go and who to speak to and what actually worked. Man, some of these guys have compelling, compelling offers, right? Especially the um, the Alex Hormozy style. Um, uh, you get well, what's the? You get five sales this month, or we pay you two thousand dollars. That's like the no-brainer offer that Alex Ramosi taught, and they and they started coming up with this, especially marketing agencies. Don't get me wrong; it's I'm not saying that everyone that does that is is trying to jip you, but gee, some of those offers are wild. You guys know how many uh, the Facebook messages just getting hit like crazy. Hello, sir. How could you handle an extra 50 uh, qualified appointments this month? Or uh, hello, I, I have an uh, an excess of leads. I need someone to take them. Can you please help? You know, the, the offers out there are getting, they're getting pretty smart. So that's why I put this as a challenge because um, when you're moving into remote and you don't really know the scene, it is very easily to get duped. Um, I just want to give you some basic tips on this one. Um, there is no magic pill. There's nothing that's going to replace sweat equity. There are certainly some cool things to optimize. AI is not negative. There's some amazing optimizations that AI can do. Um, automation, software, uh, leads and generating leads in a certain way and sits, these are all good things. But the second the, the offering, the pitch is click this button, buy my X, do this thing, and you don't have to, you know, the, the vibe is you don't have to work, it's just gonna do everything for you. That's when I start to, okay, well, let's, let's be real here. This is real life. What are you trying to sell me, man? It's this same exact thing that snake oil salesmen have been selling for hundreds of years. This, you know, get this, get this oil. It cures cancer, Alzheimer's, cures the itches, the everything, and just list like 
50 different ailments. You don't have to do anything. It just cures it right off the bat, right? It's the same thing. So um, that's a general tip, but I, I put that as a challenge because it is important to, to understand that, that people are trying to get you out of your, your, your money for things that might not work uh, as, as, as advertised. Uh, for me, what it looks like is, Here's an awesome tool. This is the this is how you sell me on something, right? Here's an amazing tool. It's a, it's life changing, but you have to put a shit ton of work into making it work, right? That for me, if someone came to me with that, that's I'm gonna go for that, right? Oh, my DMs are gonna be filled with with stuff like that tomorrow. But that, that's that's how I, I operate. And if someone misses that piece for me, it's like oh, do you just slide this in? Boom, done. You know, you don't have to do anything else. That's when I start getting a bit uh, sus, okay? But certainly a challenge for people that are either moving into remote or or in it right now, or door to door. Um, and the final challenge before we get into some other stuff is the unknown. So what I mean about the unknown is, for some reason, solar is always so behind in new sales strategies. Phone sales is one of them. Um, I mean, phone sales is so old, man. Uh, phones, like Jordan Belfort, Wolf of Wall Street was um, the 80s, right? 50 years ago. It's not new at all. Phone sales have been around forever. So, you know, I, I, I do feel now that people understand that you can be successful in phone sales and in, uh, in remote solar sales. But like when I first started, you know, sounding the blowhorn in the US industry, uh, when did I, 2020, was it? Uh, when did I, when's the first time I popped here? Five years ago, four years ago? Um, and telling everybody, hey man, why isn't anyone selling remote over the phones? We've been doing it in Australia for years. Everyone was just like, that's ridiculous. That can't happen. Um, definitely better now. There's a lot more examples. It's not just coming from me. It's, there's a lot of other people that have been successful at it. Uh, but it's still an unknown. And if you've never sold a high ticket item over the phone, or if you've been taught that door to door is the only way to do things and you can't add on phone sales to supplement your, your growth, then you might have a negative connotation. You might have a bit of disbelief, right? But you know, ultimately you got to come to the understanding that us selling a $50,000, $100,000 solar system over the phone, dude, Jordan Belfort was slinging millions of dollars over the phone 55 years ago, okay? This is nothing new. Like, let's, let's, let's get rid of the idea that phone sales, high ticket phone sales is like impossible. It's just ridiculous. Um, the whole, oh no, someone really wants to shake your hand and be in person with you. You okay, tell that to the phone sales guys on Wall Street 50 years ago, making millions of dollars. It's just not the case, all right? Um, so adding on that is, is nothing new and, and really getting rid of that unknown factor is, is good for your psyche. If you don't think it's possible, then you're gonna lose motivation after trying for a bit and not succeeding. The best way to do that, join a community. Like I said, get amongst other people or just find someone out there that, that is successful and just watch them and let them motivate you, right? Um, for me, all I need to see is someone do something once. I don't need to see this, but if I see someone do something once, I know it's possible and I go crazy at it because I know I can probably do it better than them. That's my ego and competition talking, right? But that, that really motivates me. So if you're that type of person, get around someone that's doing it, get around a group of people, um, see what's happening and, and get rid of that unknown factor for you. Because like I said, if you're grinding out for a few days, a few weeks, a few months, and you're not seeing the results that you want, that, that little doubt of whether it's even possible is just going to take over. And it doesn't even matter that, you know, you obviously were doing things wrong. You didn't have the right systems. You didn't have the right scripts. Your, your pitch was all wrong. And you know that. It, that doesn't matter any at that point because that doubt of whether it's actually possible supersedes everything and just shuts you down. It's happened to me so many times, right? Um, it's a that massive challenge to be aware of.